St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. Chapter 5. I want to dedicate that to Sister Alta Beast today. Sister Wanda told us that she wasn't feeling well and wanted her to get better and get ready for this revival. Amen. Get geared up, fired up, ready for the revival. I want to remind you once again that our revival begins this Wednesday night, December the 31st. Uh, we'll be having our watch night service. And then we'll be back here every night till uh, the revival is over. We're giving it out to go through uh, to the 4th, I think January the 4th, on a Sunday night. But uh, it could go longer. So you just be praying and be trusting God. Brother Kevin Hinton and his wife, Sister Wendy, will be with us. They'll be doing the You'll be doing the preaching, and then you'll be singing some. Our singers here in the church uh, will be singing, and we're just going to have a great time. I also want to dedicate to Sister Sue Honeycutt today. Sister Sue's a, a good piano player, and uh, we're filling in for a in her absence, but she just means a lot to us. Dedicate to her, Brother Roger. Chapter 5 of the book of St. Matthew's Gospel, we'll start at verse 13. Verse 13, we'll be reading down to verses 16. Verse 13 through 16. If you there say, Man, Jesus said, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith is it to be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither, thank you, Brother Jerry, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But on the candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I'd like to preach today for a few moments of time, shining the brightest in the darkness. Shining the brightest in the darkness. Would you bow your heads and hearts? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this great day. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Father, for all that you mean to us. We lift up the Petty family, the Perry family to you today, God. We thank you for their families and their love. And God, we lift this, these precious families up that have given up their precious loved ones. And we thank you, God, that you'll walk with them not only to the cemetery and through the funeral process, but you'll go with them all the way. You will never leave them and never forsake them. God, touch Sister Karen, all her family, and the Sister Sheila, Brother Mike, Brother Eugene, Sister Robin, all that family, the Petty family. Be with them, God, and, and touch them, Lord. And I just pray your blessings upon them in a special and a mighty way today. We ask it all in Jesus' name. For his sake we pray. Amen. We would ask you to remember uh, the Petty family. Uh, several of that family that come to our church here. Sister Gail, Sister Sheila, Brother Mike, Kay, all of them. And uh, their families. And then also Sister Karen, which gave up her mother this week. We want to pray for them. And I'd like to just say one other thing. This community has uh, suffered a lot of great losses in the past few months and, and years down through time. But uh, I'll tell you, there was a great man of God that went home to be with Jesus just last Sunday night, Brother Earl Davis, 77 years young. And uh, Brother Earl was one of my dear friends. He was a great man. And when I went up to view him the other day, I couldn't help but think about a revival that Brother Wendell and I was talking about it down at Now uh, Nile that we had together. Brother Earl was the pastor, and I was the evangelist. Tony, you remember that revival? And Wendell and I was talking. About that revival, I was talking to his son, Monty. Uh, I want you to remember Mary Nail in prayer. Uh, she, she needs you prayer. They've been together a long time. Brother Earl, uh, I, we, we prayed about that revival. And God sent it. And on the last night, Kenneth was doing better than he was on the first night. But we went ahead and broke it because we wanted to <coughs> end it on a high note. And I don't doubt that ain't the most people that ever came inside that church. And I'm telling you, that, that was a revival I'll never forget as long as I live. Brother Earl Davis was a great, great pillar of this community. And we'll be, we'll be uh, sad that he's gone, but we'll rejoice with his family, Randy and Carolyn, and Monty and Tim, and Mary Nail, that, that he's in heaven today, and he's with Jesus. And uh, I tell you, he, uh, he's a great man of God. And I just want to say that in his honor, that we're, we're, we're sad, but we're happy for him. Shining the brightest 
in the darkness. You know, when Jesus was speaking here, he said, Let your light so shine before men that you may that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We just celebrated what many uh, call the best time of the year. And it's the Christmas season and the season that we come together as families. And, and uh, Brother Oscar Lee, we all get together and we fellowship and we eat and we give gifts to one another. And we do a lot of good things. But you know, I was speaking to a businessman this week at his, his business. I pulled in there to get some gas and he and I was talking. And, and he said these words to me and it's really stuck out to me since he said it. He said, you know, even in the hardest of hard times, he said, I've watched in this community as people have pulled together and churches have generously given and people have done so many things and, and have been such a blessing to so many in this area. You know, it really, it really stuck with me when he said that and I prepared this message and God had already dealt with me about the message. But you know what I really, really thought about when he and I was talking and when I drove off? That God has given us an opportunity to do more for Him in, in a most opportune time than we've ever had before in our life. When people are hurting the worst is when you can minister the most. When people are going through things and struggling and, and having a hard time, and not just financially, but most of the time that I've helped a lot of people along life's journey, Brother Roger, is when they were going through some of the darkest times that they've ever been through. I tell you, you can be in the hospital and be sick and look up and smile and somebody smiling coming through that door. It means a million times more than somebody coming through telling you bad news. Or, or when somebody's coming through that door and, and they've got something to bring you or something to give you and you're probably at your lowest time uh, that you've ever been in life. You know, that's when we can shine our lights, the brightest in the darkest. You know, when you turn all these lights off in here, and, and a lot of times even when the exit signs are not lit up, amen, it's pretty dark in here. But somebody can just turn on one light, and Brother Roger, all of a sudden, the darkness has gone, and, and the light begins to shine. That's what Jesus said we was. He said, ye were a light. Ye are a light. He said, now, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Who was he talking to in the very first place? For the light he was talking to, his disciples and the followers that were following him along. He said, you've got a light. Now let that light shine. Now before this world, you're a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. He said, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Oh, listen, you let it, let it be the darkest. That's when a child of God shines the brightest. You might say, I'm not helping anybody, but you're doing a lot more than you really think you are. When you live for Jesus Christ, when everybody else is turning and going back, and everybody else is going in the towel, said it's no use in trying it, and God's dealing with me like this. Listen, when bad things start happening to me, God's not the first one I think about. He's the first one I think about in helping me through those bad things. First time people, first thing people think of when something comes along, maybe a sickness or something, they think, well, God's dealing with me. God don't deal with how you like that. He deals with you on a basis that He's your Heavenly Father. Then let me tell you something. All four of my children, five or whatever, amen, Every one of them can tell you today, amen, that I love them and I appreciate them and I try to do for them and I try to help them. Amen. Why? Because I'm their father. But in growing up, when they were growing up, my brother Chris, I had to deal with them on the basis. When they got out of line, I had to dust their riches a little bit. I had to turn them up just a little bit. I had to deal with them on the basis that you're my child, but yet I love you. Listen, God's the same way. How many of us today, if our child come up and ask us, for something that we don't try to do that if they need that. If they don't they ask us for something, we don't try to open up our hearts and share it with them and give to them. And God's the very same way. He said, I've made you a light. I've made you a light that sets on that